thank you, uh, David, for, for the opportunity here. Um, I'm, uh, although we're talking generally about the stock market here, I am into the uh, commodities markets mostly. We're going to take a look today at the um, the um, S and P. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, probably the Nasdaq and the currencies, uh, the crude oil. We want to take a look at gold and silver, which this time of the year is one, is is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, but I I wanted to just stress the fact that. Uh, when I, I'm going to show you here exactly how I approach the markets. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the daily charts so that I can kind of give you an idea of what I feel that the general direction is for long-term traders. Uh, but I'll be focusing primarily on uh, those who are taking into account the long-term uh, aspects of things, but also um, are trading on the short term where they get out at the end of the day or if they're a day or two or whatever, but mostly day traders. Um, I'm going to uh, also tailor my thinking here and my thoughts to um, the idea that uh, a lot of you out there are, um, are considering uh, something called prop trading. Um, there are, I know that in my list, there are uh, a few uh, large accounts, in fact, even professional traders that, that I've known for a year that we follow each other. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, traders with five, 10, $15,000 accounts, which can be very, very tough uh, to be successful with because uh, you need to uh, keep the loss uh, on each trade very small. And when, uh, prop trading, if you don't know what it is, is a um, is where uh, these uh, proprietary firms will actually give you money to trade, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, fifty thousand. They'll give you money to trade so that you can, uh, and they'll give you ninety percent of the profit. Um, now, of course, uh, you wonder why they, uh, how they can give you ninety percent of the profits. You see, they, you've got to pass a test. Most of the testing are two phases. You've got to pass the same test twice. And essentially you've got to make say $6,000 before you lose $3,000. Uh, and if you can do that, then um, that twice, they will actually fund your account and you can actually trade that account and, uh, and they'll give you 90% of the profit. And it's happening right now. Uh, so it's very attractive for people with small accounts to if you know how to trade and know how to keep the risk small, that you can actually uh, be funded and 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 make make money with somebody else's money and keep the majority of the profit. Now, how how can they do that? Uh, the, the the proprietary firms know that only about ten percent of traders are successful. I mean, that's a, a known fact. It's a it's a fact that's been thrown around for uh, all the years that I've been in in trading. And it's been proven by a, a number of different uh, reports and so on that others um, uh, that have, have studies that have gone on in different parts of the world coming out with all the same conclusion, right around 90% of traders don't make any money. Uh, so they know this. And the fact is when you, when you test with a prop firm, uh, you need to pay them a monthly fee while you're, uh, while you're trying to pass the test. Once you pass it, there's no more monthly fee. But that monthly fee can be two, three, four hundred dollars a month, depending on how large an account you're you're applying for. And if ninety percent fail, you just have ninety percent of people paying three, three, two, three, four hundred dollars a month. That's where they make their money. So they can uh, reward the top ten percent um, and allow that to happen. Okay, I say that because I'm getting a lot of emails about that because we have traders that are using our um, our trading plan called Loaded Gun, which I'm gonna show you uh, how I analyze the long-term and short-term markets uh, using some of the principles. Now I can't show you everything. I'm gonna concentrate on entrance right now. There's two important, the, the two most important things about trading are, are, are how you enter and how you exit. Uh, most traders get into the en entry part, but, but leave out the exit part which uh, in the end is the most important thing. You got to get out at some time. Um, in any event, um, I want to show you at least how I 
enter trades and keep the loss small. Because again, if you are prop trading, it's very important to keep the losses small. I mean, to to have a uh, to uh, to want you to um, to give you the condition that you can only lose three thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar account. Uh, that's pretty tight stuff. You know, mostly when you're trading, you're giving yourself more room and flexibility. Uh, they don't allow that in these firms. So you need to adjust your trading plan in order to uh, fit uh, those those parameters. And um, and I've written several books. My, my love used to be just writing trading plans for individuals. One other important thing, and I'm going to I'm just going to throw out shots uh, to your th thoughts that uh, I just heard the, the last uh, uh, 15 minutes of, 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 of Math, Matthew's uh, presentation, The Wiz, and, and I, I, there are three or four shots that he gave you. I'm going to kind of do the same thing that um, they're, they're, I guess I'm going to call them wisdom, and it's not because I'm the smartest guy on earth. It's because I've learned from experience. I, too, like Wiz, have, have been around for decades here. So um, I'm going to now get into how I enter trades and how I ride trades when they work and how I cut off um, how I cut off the um, my how my how I cut my losses so that you can uh, you can be successful in uh, winning the money to go ahead and trade uh, with somebody else's money I do want to say though uh, that um, that every trader is different in in, in the uh, in every book that I've written about trading plans, the first part of the book is all, all is, is always about knowing yourself. Who are you? Uh, are you an accountant type like my accountant who needs confirmations, uh, two or three or four confirmations before they get into a trade? Or are you a trader like I am uh, and uh, th that wants more action, that's willing to uh, to get into trades that have that I believe have high probability from my experience, but don't need to qualify each trade with four or five hoops to jump. Uh, that's and if you're somewhere in the middle, as I go through this presentation, I want you to um, pick up on the kinds of uh, uh, on the comments that I make in each of the personality categories, because again. The absolute most important thing in trading is not your trading plan. It is your ability to follow your trading plan. So when you create a trading plan or when you, when you uh, adjust a trading plan uh, with new elements, you need to make sure that those elements match who you are and how you want to trade. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble following it and executing those kinds of processes when you're under pressure. So, um, and, and pressure happens all the time. Now I'm a, let's get into it. I'm a believer that price, everything is in price. Um, I believe that, um, that not only everything that is known is in the current price, but everything that is perceived to be about to happen is in price. Now in stocks, I, I remember we used to say that six months in the future, the stock market looks, that's not true anymore. I don't think it, it, um, it's lucky if it looks past two weeks in a lot of cases. In any event, um, I wanted to just make sure that you understood that some of the things I, I'm about to say may or may not fit you. I'm gonna to try to differentiate the kinds of traders, but it's all with the theme of keeping your losses low and give, giving you, you profit potential. Okay, are you ready to go? Is that enough, uh, is, is that enough pre, uh, pre notion here? Okay, all right, let's get going. I've, I've, um, this is a chart of the, uh, of the crude oil. This is the mini crude oil contract, which is half size. It's really a nice place to trade for accounts 20, 25,000 and, and up um, because you can take on a couple of positions. This right here, is what I call a trigger. This is this is the trigger that I'm going to be talking about. Now, uh, the loaded gun uh, trading plan uh, that I've been using exclusively now for over two years, and uh, and have spread the joy with uh, uh, dozens and dozens, uh, hundreds of traders that that operate this uh, trading plan 
I want to I want to give I want to show you what one of the triggers is. There's several of them, but here's one that that gave birth to the actual trading plan. This is called I call it loaded gun, and I called it loaded gun because it kind of looks like the barrel of a gun here. And uh, the, I'm looking at the bodies right now. I'm looking at the ba uh, the barrel of the gun, the extension here, wh where previously it had a very small body. Uh, so it's a two body, it's a two body trigger. That's it, a two body trigger. And um, the, the, the um, it was created when I, I thought about this trigger about 20 years ago when I was, uh, uh, on the floor, not on the floor, I was looking through one of the windows uh, down on the floor. And uh, I was I had a few people that I was coaching, and I was showing them how the, the hand waving and so on that was going on on the floor. But I noticed that when there was no news around, when nothing was happening, um, these guys used to smoke cigarettes and, and uh, just lean all around talking, nothing was happening. That's what's actually happening in the minds of traders right here when nothing's going on. This I call an indecision candle. OK, and I'm only concerned with the body. Uh, those who uh, derived uh, uh, candlestick charting, uh, the, one of the first things that they emphasize is the body is the most important area. In fact, some even ignore to to a large degree any of these wicks or tails uh, that accompany the body. Of course, the red means that the it's, it really defines the open and the close. The green defines the open and the close. In a green candle, the um, the 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 high or the, the close was above the open. In a red candle, the close was below the open. So uh, this was a positive candle. This was a very small negative candle. Here, right here is, an, here is indecision, followed by a strong move through the, this is, I'm using here the, let's see if I'm using the, the, we use several of them, but this is the eight bar exponential moving average. Okay, I like to use that, especially for beginners. Um, this right here, is a trigger to go long when when the when the hesitation candle when the hesitation body is on one side of the moving average and followed by a extension candle followed by an extension candle through the moving average and you have to wait for the close that's a buy when you buy uh, i i always buy two positions and i urge you to always buy two positions. And I urge you, even when you, when, when you buy stocks or whatever, to treat them at least as two sections. If you buy 100, um, if, if you buy 100 shares, treat them as 250 share lots. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. Um, but right here, if you were to um, take this signal, you would be buying two positions on the long side, two contracts, on the close, when you say on the close, some, I, sometimes I'm putting my finger right on the mouse. I'm watching the countdown, and as soon as the next candle shows its 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 value, I'm I'm clicking buy. So the, the first click of the next candle. Okay, some of our people are just trying to get the exact. What well, the idea is, you got to let the candles close. Okay. Once you do that, then you follow the. You as long as you remain on the north side in a long trade of the moving average you want to stay in that trade. So this was, uh, of course, I'm showing you a successful trade right here. Uh, when you, in this system that I'm talking to you about, uh, my experience over two years of trading, uh, two plus years of trading, is that it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's truly a 67% winning trade approach. In other words, you'll win two out of three trades. Uh, anybody that tells you, you know, I see these advertising uh, advertisements all the time. You know, ninety-five percent of our trade. No, I don't believe it. Uh, I don't. Uh, and I and if I if it's true, they, they certainly can't pass that on to you. I don't know how they can make those kinds of claims. In any event, um, if you have a trading plan that is good two out of three times, uh, has a profit when you manage the profit correctly by the rules of the plan, then you're going to uh, have a, a success, very successful outcome. Um, so why do I buy two? And the reason I, got, I buy two is, again, the most important thing about trading. And I'm going to ask you right now, what's the most important thing about your trading? If somebody would put it in the chat, I just need a couple of people to, to tell me what, what is the most important thing about trading the way I, I described. I've mentioned it, but I want, I want to know from you because before I control losses, that is 
the second most important thing. It's, it's the most important thing once you uh, exit plan. Uh, another important thing, I'd say the exit plan, controlling losses and exit plan. Uh, if you make money, uh, then you're controlling your profit. That's part of the same thing. There you go. Mead said it, control emotion. Risk management is very important. That's the technical part. But I, the, the winning trading plans, and the, the reason traders follow me, and I'm talking professional traders and new traders alike follow me, because when I talk about trading, I always include the idea of what makes the trading plan more likely to be followed. Okay, if you're a struggling trader, the, 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 I am going to guess with, with certainty that the, the, the real reason is not your trading plan, that it is your ability to follow your trading plan. That's why you're struggling, that you're, you're getting in your own way. And I forgive you for it. But now that I've mentioned it, I can't forget, <laughs> forgive you in the future. We, we, we specialize in that. I'm not talking about that today, other than to say when you build a trading plan, when I build trading plans, I and I and I hand them to somebody else to manage. I make sure that that trading plan has infused a lot of my ideas about your making it easy for you to follow. In other words, taking away the majority of of why traders, the majority reason of why traders fail. Look, ninety percent of traders fail. Ninety percent of traders do nothing about their mental and emotional capabilities. You all have the capability to follow your trading plan, but you're not doing it because you're not spending time with it. You gotta spend time with the mental part. If you're not willing to do that, or if you're, if you're willing to do it, but not to the extent where you really should, what I'm about to explain to you is going to help. And when I, when I say what I'm about to explain to you, I'm explaining to you why I not insist, but I strongly recommend that when you buy, when you take a position, you take a double, uh, two positions. Let me explain why. If you were to take, I'd like you to take two positions right here, buying two right here. And then when you, when, as soon as you take that, the next thing you do is put your stop below the formation. Now, uh, if you're trading a, a prop trading, I don't like to take losses less than, I don't like to see you take losses also less than uh, more than $200 a trade or 250 per trade. So you're going to have to um, judge whether you take a trade based on whether you're going to be able to sustain the loss in the trade. Okay, so assuming that you can, you buy two here. And here's the key. You treat one of those two positions as a scalp and you, trade, and you, and you treat the other position as what I call a runner, okay? As a swing trade. Uh, it's, not, it's not a swing trade because you're, so a lot of definition of swing trades where you can hold it overnight, but when you're letting it run at least to the end of the day, if you're a day trader, okay. And so what you're going to do with those two positions when you establish them is you're going to take one out as a scalp, and then you're going to let the other one ride. Now, when you take the one out as a scalp, you move the stop on the remaining position to break even. Okay. Why do I do that? For a number of reasons. Well, the reason I I, I take a scalp and then leave the other one as a runner is because traders fail. Many traders, for one of the main reasons is that when you start to get profitable in a trade, you start, the, your visions of grandeur start to happen. Boy, this could be good, especially when it takes off like this right away uh, in the next, without any kind of back backtracking, it takes off for you right away. And you say to yourself, wow, this could be it. Let me just, just let me keep this th thing going. Of course, it goes up and, and many trades will back up and wind up either breaking you even and, or, or even a loss from a gain. And you say to yourself, why didn't I just take what God gave me? Why didn't I just take it when I had it? OK, when you run two positions and you take what you take the profit on one as a scalp and you let the other one run because sometimes when scalpers, the complaint that I get from scalpers is, gosh, I wish I had hung on to that position because look what happened. Look how well it did over time. Why didn't I keep that position? Well, that conflict, whether you take the scalp, the easy money, the low hanging fruit, or let it go and, 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 and allow the risk to to continue to exist, um, 
that dichotomy, that choice is confusion. And what you wind up doing is nothing or talking yourself into one or the other where, you, where, where you're, you're, you're trying to be flexible with your plan or maybe even you made your plan too flexible. But if your rule is that you take the profit on half and you let the other half ride and you defend it with your, with your um, risk management um, scheme, then, then you eliminate that confusion. The more confusion that you can eliminate, the more possible and probable it is that you're going to follow your trading plan the way it's written and you can be part of that 10%. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you understand the importance of, of if you can, and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do that, how to infuse mental and emotional trading support into your trading plan while at the same time doing it in a responsible way based on price and action. Okay. Um, I hope you get that because that's that's a really important part of what I'm saying. Okay. So here, here is, we're going to be just looking at this trigger today. Um, uh, and we're going to um, take a look at some charts and see what's going on. I'm just going to rely on this trigger to give me an uh, idea of, uh, and, and the golden, this is kind of the golden average uh, the eight bar exponential moving average. So if one were to buy here, uh, you, and so where do you take your scalp? That's the next question, okay? The where I like to take scalp, now everybody's a little bit different about this, but I like to take this, I, I measure the body here, the extension bar body, and I, I multiply that here. In other words, I'll take the same distance and from the close, I'll measure that same distance here and that's where I'll put my limit cell. Generally, when you have when when you when the, the market is attempting to uh, begin a direction, start a trend, okay, hesitation, powerful bar compared to especially the other size of the others, um, over the moving average, where th this is a possibility of starting a trend of which it did. I'm going to, but if it fails, I'm going to take, if, but gives you a little action, I'm going to be taking my, my scalp here. And then I'm, and, and again, when you, when you take your scalp, you move your trade, your break even to break even, or you, move, you move the stop on the remaining uh, uh, position to break even and, and you're right. And you're right. In this particular case, you would have ridden it all the way up. This is a really nice trade. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but you're going from 8,100 up to where you got out. And I won't get into where you got, but here's where I would be getting out. And that's uh, 8170. 81, so that's that's a $350 move, even in a small with a half position plus this, the scalp. Um, you're going, when I show you a lot, you're gonna take a lot of scalps and you're going to break even on a lot of the runners. But that's the idea. If you can take a little, what happens in this system I'm, I'm describing to you is that your it winds up that the scalps generally will cover your losses and you go home with the runners, okay? Not the runs, but the runners, okay? So let's take a look at, at, at the way this uh, trigger works and, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of insight. I can't explain it to you all because there are uh, several triggers. I'm just dealing with this one, but I believe in simple. This is called a simple trading plan. I would say about half of our traders take the loaded gun simple trading plan and they take pieces of it and they install it into their current trading plan to make it even better. The other half trade it the way it is. And I trade it the way it is. But uh, again, everybody has their loves and likes. There's no two traders that are alike. So honor yourself for being different, but understand that we all have to trade responsibly by the same principles. All right, here is a, here's a, I, I drew some arrows right before I got on to, to kind of give me an idea. Look, well, here's, here's one obvious one right here. Okay, we have a, now this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, no trade happens in a vacuum. So that when I look at this signal, I'm wondering whether I should take the minimum of two positions or maybe I should take three or four or five. Maybe I should take my maximum number depending on what's around me, okay? Minimum being two positions. So I'm looking here and I'm seeing we have a, uh, we have a, uh, a hesitation here, followed by a move through the moving average. This takes out the highs of one, two, three, four, five, six, former highs. It, it 
it looks like it, it tested a, a couple of uh, soft uh, support areas here. This is a nice signal. It's probably a two or three signal. The risk is nice and short. You wind up, you took your scalp here. Again, I hope I'm not moving too fast for you. You took your scalp here and you rode the other one all the way up to here. You, you're staying up. Now, do you get out here when it crosses back? In this particular case, not, but there are cases that you do. I can't go through the exit, but I will tell you the way that the, the system works. You would have been in it to here. Again, another uh, 60 point move or 300 point move on the runner. Uh, let, me, let me, I see the chat here. They, uh, he uses Fibonacci. Well, um, well, this is the eight, this is the eight day, or this is the eight minute, this is the uh, eight bar exponential moving average, depending on how bar you bar. Are the arrows added by you? No, it's not the platform. I add the bar. I added those bars. Thank you. Um, is that a 50 EMA? No. What you're looking at here is an eight bar exponential moving average. Okay. Now we, we use different ones, but I want to show you just, I'm, I'm trying to shake you by the shoulders and say, if you can find a responsible trigger and a trading plan that can infuse some of the discipline that escapes you when you're trading and have a responsible trading plan that catches big moves, you've got a great trading plan. That's what I'm showing you here, okay? But please don't trade based on what I'm showing you here because the exits and where you stay in and out, there are rules, not many, but there are rules that are disclosed only for paying customers. But I want to show you the capability of a simple trigger, of just this particular trigger. So I showed you the capability here. Here is a, another trigger. Now, this did go through by a couple of ticks. There are some of our traders that like to see it go through a little bit more. There are some traders that uh, like me that take the signal even with a tick. Okay, again, scalp would have been taken here and the, and, and you would have been in here. Uh, actually, in this particular case, uh, you would have broken even on your second trade if you follow the basic rules. We have basic rules, which fit, we call it a simple trading plan because it fits on one sheet of paper. Okay, there also are what I call nuances. These are rules that are optional based on who you are as a trader. You're not going to hear this by, from anybody else. This is the key to winning. This is why traders are successful, because they pay attention to what is built into my trading plan that matches me as an individual and, and keeps me on track. Okay, uh, let's get into it. Here's a losing trade. Okay, now, this may not have been a trade. This actually isn't a trade, but I, I put it because it looks like a trade. The reason it's not is because there's not a big enough difference between the small body and the big one. I, I like to see at least three or four um, times the body. Now, of course, that's kind of a crazy statement because the perfect indecision is a doji like this. This is the perfect indecision. And, uh, and uh, any candle after, an, after a zero candle would be infinity times that candle. So I say three or four, you, you, you learn how to judge. You want to see movement in your in the direction through the eight bar exponential moving average you want to see it with some sort of authority this particular did not qualify this qualifies why does it qualify we've we, we have several indecision bars here we 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 have our body of the hesitation on one side and we've moved dramatically through the the eight bar exponential moving average with uh with confidence okay and um we put our we put our scalp right in this area again we're measuring this body and we're putting it uh, so we put the limit cell here of course we put our stops down here on both positions well right in here we took our scalp and we moved our, our stop to break even and the market continued higher but look at these look at these moves initiated by a simple theory and it's a theory uh, it's my theory and i'm holding to it because i see the formation working indecision followed by decision results in more than not an extension at least to the scalp of which the market backs off and you break even on the second position. Are you seeing the value of what I'm talking about as far as taking trades with confidence? Now you're gonna take double losses sometimes. You're gonna take um, some, now here, here's uh, one that I haven't marked because uh, uh, this was, I was just coming into it, but here's another signal right here, okay? Now this would be, a signal that was as a minimum signal because um, you know this is a strong market and it's not a huge candle 
and it's not taking out a lot of highs, but it does qualify. Well, qualified enough to get your scalp and you'd still be in this trade on the way down. But this is a, this is a weaker version of a stronger form, the same formation, but I, I think I, I tried to tell you about taking out tops and so on. There's a number of other things we look at all around. Now, if you look at this now, you're, you're, you're saying, could this be the start of a head and shoulders top? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, again, I'm, I, I want to see that trigger. I want to see that trigger mature into a trade of which it did. Now, you were, now here's a trigger here. I'm sorry. And uh, actually, here's another trigger here. I won't get into tails. Uh, I may mention it here and there. But um, one thing I noticed that I did mark off here is that this high right here is higher than this high. We made a new high, and yet the momentum has come down. This is one thing that I've learned from Hema, um, Hema Reddy, who if you don't have her stuff, you need to look at it for the RSI. She's a terrific woman who, who is the queen of, of the RSI. Uh, and I'm saying to you that when you see a, when you see a, a, a um, disassociation, a divergence, they call it, when you see higher high, but a decrease in momentum, that's the time to look for a signal. So now I'm going back on my first word and saying this is probably a three for not a, not a, not just two positions. Maybe I'll take three of which I take my first scalp here and I may take my second scalp uh, an equidistant again there and let the third one ride. I'm always taking at least half or the majority in the scalp form. And because you don't want to live a dream. <laughs> you know, we, we sit there and we just say, this is it. This is it. Look at yesterday's move of which this system caught. All right, let's. Um, are you digging this? Are you with me? Uh, I see some chat things here. RSI works well too for Jover. And yes, it, it does. Um, again, uh, we do news nine different situations, different markets. So I can explain that when, uh, you know, if you become part of the, um, and I'm going to give you uh, something to take with you uh, so that you can decide whether you want to do that or not. Um, yeah, our lowest, our, so somebody noticed it before I did, which is great. Okay, so let's get into... Um, I want to look at the daily on the crude. Okay, let's use the same kind. Now, don't worry about these uh, this, these annotations. They were just from the earlier chart. But look what we're looking at here. Uh, I will say, it, write this down, and and people will argue with me, but it's from my experience that the longer time frame that you use in your charting, the longer. If this was a ten minute or a fifteen or daily, signals seem to be more accurate from my judgment, from my experience, the, the longer the time frame, the more accurate the signal. Now it may only be from 67% to 71% or 67% on a five minute chart, which is where I work with most of the time because of the way I trade, uh, compared to say 71 or 72% uh, on a daily. It, it's not enough to, to, to weird you out on the deal, but, but it is something that, that I did want to mention. All right, let's take a look at some of the things that we're seeing here. Here's a signal here that looks like got stopped out, okay? Um, let's, let's look here. Let, let's take a look at where we are. That, that's the important part. Here's a signal recently. Now, now, there are a number of reasons this is nearly a maximum take on the downside. Um, and the reason is because uh, there are two reasons. Uh, actually, there may be three reasons for those are there that are into the RSI. This right here, we, we, we made a top, okay? We've cha we challenged that top, okay, here, and we failed, okay, with, with our trigger. The trigger shows the failure. Now, we also have what is uh, kind of a weak, but still probably qualifies for a shooting star, which uh, Steve Nissen will tell you one of the most powerful signals. Now, I like to see the uh, the body at the very bottom of the range. But th this tells me enough. It tells me that these people right here, this small distance, if I were to draw a line here, it took out those highs. There's the people who, who want to go long breaking this high. Well, we took all those people out right here and we came back in this five minute and in, in this daily chart and we, uh, and we closed um, lower on the day. Okay, that's a big disappointment. Plus, we have an RSI here with this high. And if you count interday rather than the close, inter, interbar rather than the close, you have a, a new high being made. 
and a, and a, a deceleration of momentum. So here's another reason to believe that this is going to be a valued short position. It's going to actually work and be part of that 67%. And it certainly did. Now, here you have, um, here you have something that is a reverse position. Now, I'm not going to get into uh, whether you would take that, but I will say that because we have something that we use as a guardrail, it's another moving average, and I, I can't throw that in. Maybe I'll see it on another chart, but the idea is that sometimes you get faked out, um, especially when you have a lot of stuff that's pointing to the down direction uh, by something simple like this. You would be, by our system, you would be in this trade all the way, okay? And if not, um, you would have gotten your scalp and you would have broken even on your remaining trade, which is fine. Okay, you're not going to have the runner for each one of those. But looking at at the current our current situation, oh, that's the uh, that's that bar I drew uh, to show you the signal. Um, right now we are we've 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 uh, this market. This is the this is the crude market. I don't see a lot of upside in the crude market. Again, people will fight. Again, it's I I, I have my opinions, but you know. And you have your opinions, but you can throw those out the window. You gotta, you, you gotta value the price rather than your opinion. We've got a bottom here. We've checked the bottom with a nice long tail. Again, similar to what happened here. Took out a lot of people who went short down here looking for seventy dollar crude or sixty five dollar crude or fifty dollar crude, and they all got stopped out on the on the reversal here as in, the, in that same bar because they had their the sell stops down here. You need confirmation if you're gonna do things like that. In any event, um, we're, we're seeing a movement higher. Um, you've, got a, you've got some accumulation of price here. You've, you certainly, uh, this 92 area is going to be an area that, that, we, um, uh, that we look at for resistance. But I do think that, that we'll probably, um, in that, that this area right here, is probably where we will, you know, you can draw your Fibonacci's, you can do what you want, but I'm not doing anything till I see this, okay? And then I'm looking around and seeing the pop, the probability that it's going to be a successful trade. Even though I'm gonna take every one, the probability keeps me adjusting my 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 potential, my, my uh, how many positions I'm going to take, okay? Again, um, one of the key risk management um, techniques, capabilities that you have is adjusting the number of positions, okay? So this would be a three probably because we're getting, although the risk is high, you're high, you're, you're here. I see a lot of things, be it probably a two or three. I'm very, very conservative when I'm teaching traders how to pass the, um, the, uh, um, the prop trading. And the prop trading, remember, this works, you don't have to be a prop trader to, to take advantage of what I'm saying to you. But I'm saying that this particular one not, not only works for you know, your general account, but if you're looking to keep your risk very low with something high probability, here's another signal that worked out. Um, in any event, uh, here's one that didn't, okay? But you're going, when they, you're gonna get runs. I mean, again, the, the winning trades, uh, the, the scalps will take care of the losers. And the winning trade, and this is my, you know, you have to test everything. Don't believe me. We have a, a guarantee period that, uh, that, that makes it reasonable for you to do. I want to show you something uh, because David actually gave me a good tip to, uh, I want to show you this right here. I want you to download this. Uh, this is my book. Uh, it's a, it's a, just a paper I wrote. It's only five to six pages long. Their money, your profits, the pros and cons of prop trading. Why? Some of you may want to consider uh, taking the test with a system like, like this and, and letting them fund you. It's happening all the time. Uh, so, but, but what are the pitfalls? What are the pros and cons? I want you to, and, and the URL is the disciplinetrader.com forward slash prop win. Okay. The disciplinetrader.com forward slash prop win. You can put the S in HTTPS or you don't have to put the S. If you don't put the S, it's going to forward to the secure page anyway. So the disciplinetrader.com forward slash prop win. It's a paper I wrote really digging into what's needed if you're going to approach this because the majority of people on my list and the majority of people on anybody's list, even David's list here, are people with smaller accounts. Prop trading kind of makes sense if you can do it correctly. Okay, so I want to show you how to, uh, how to, what do you got to look for? Who is for? Who it isn't? I want you to just have this. Uh, this is my giveaway for today. Okay, it's just a a, a white paper that I wrote on uh, on prop trading. So um, 
I think David's probably putting the, the link in there as he does. Uh, this symbol here is QM. Incidentally, thank you, David, for putting that in. All right, let's take a look at some markets. And I want to take a look at um, some of the market. Let's take a look at uh, the S&P today and see what's going on here. Uh, let's take a look. First of all, you, you know, this this kind of is all about where I believe the market's going from from here. And, um, and and let's take a look at some of the past triggers in this daily chart. This is the S&P. OK. <laughs> And you're going to laugh when you see this. And this is going to make you want to just not do anything, but do what I'm telling you with it. Don't do it. The, the magic is in the exiting. There's going to be a lot of situations like this uh, where you never get to here because you uh, because you took some losses in here and you got you, you didn't want to take the next signal. Look at this. Here's one right here. Now, here's the what I call the backstop. It's a um, I'm going to erase it because it's not. Um, it's it's something that prevents you from getting into a false breakout, like I just told you with this same signal. But let's let's concentrate on the value of the signal. Here's a the, here's a signal right here, very clear as day. You took your scalp here, and look at this. You would have been out. You you would have stayed in on this, believe it or not. Uh, you, again, you're moving to break even. Some of our traders take every reversal. I don't. I, I use the guardrail, but I'll, I'll show you that in a different level. The idea is that you would have taken it all the way down here uh, uh, again to, to here. Here's another. Look at this. Here's a signal right here. OK. Um, here's a signal right here that barely made it that would have had your scalp. Here's a signal that you would have taken on the short side and it would have been a loser. Here's something that I want to talk to you about. Um, I hope I'm not confusing you uh, because I'm trying to isolate the value of this trigger. Here's something else that I learned. And I think that option traders like Matt, you know, we, we go by this kind of thing and we understand this, that when you get a signal, when you get a signal, the further you get from the signal, the less quality the signal has for choosing a direction. My number is five or six. Uh, different traders, when we meet every month, and even more frequently sometimes, uh, all the people who own Loaded Gun, and we meet on our experiences. And a lot of the things like the guardrail and some of the things that I show you were contributed by others than me. I wrote the system, and they're improving it by some of the, the way they look at the markets. It's been really fabulous. But I'm showing you just some of the core stuff. Okay, so he, if you took this signal right here on the short side, if it's, if, if you, now this isn't, didn't quite get to the scalp. OK, One, there are things to do that so that you can the things that we do to um, to take it a little earlier than a, a total uh, measure. But again, I don't want to get into it. I do want to get into what I call a nuance when the market one, two, three, four, five, six. If I have six, if the market has not given me what I want, which means a movement down, I'm out at the sixth bar. Because that's enough distance, the fifth or sixth bar, that the likelihood that the that the initial signal has effect gets less and less. Now, sometimes I get out of trades with a small loss, which you would have gotten out of trades here, and it goes straight down. And I wish I would have stayed in. Forget it. I don't wish anything. All I know is the more I take the signal, and the more I follow the rules, and the more I have a trading plan that allows me to follow the rules without angst, the more, the more successful I'm going to be. Look at this signal right here. Look at this signal right here. Now, you'd have to measure your your, um, your scalp. I mean, your, your loss here. You have to measure your loss because your, 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 your stop is the, the furthest point south in a long trade of the two elements of the signal, so which would be, so you'd have to measure it. Now, sometimes a small account can only take one position. When that happens, you have to decide before you take the position whether you're going to manage it as a scalp or a runner. OK, again, I want you to take both when you can. But if, the, if it's a signal like this and it's to me, it's so clear because you, 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 you've got a bottom here, you've got you've got chesting the bottoms here. You've got my favorite form of where you have a tail. This is a hanging man uh, followed by a movement through the moving average. This is a very high probability signal. The only higher probability signal is if it took out uh, more more highs. With, with the extension candle, it only took out three here, but that's enough to, for me to make a three or four out of this. If my range is two positions to six positions that I'm willing to take on, and look at this move, tremendous! Look what happened—a nice reversal signal. Okay, 
another move down. Now, this could have been a reversal signal on the way some run the plan. I will say to you that with the guardrail, you would not have taken this signal. You would have not taken this fake out, but it's okay. A lot of people do that, do take it, and they take their loss, and then they get in again here. Okay, so, you know, you can't lament on losses. You can't get too excited about gains, although when this starts to happen, you can get a little bit excited. Um, so, I mean, look, look at the value of this. Um, here's See, do we have, here's a signal right here. Another, this, this time the tail is on the other uh, part of the element, the two element trigger, okay, the two bar trigger. You tested this button, this low, you, you faked everybody out because they didn't want to wait for the close. It's here. Uh, and, and so you're leaving all these people behind. Your stop is down here. Uh, it made more people believe it's going to go down here. And look what happened. Came right up for uh, enough to. Uh, if you if you would have gotten out of your second position right here, um, and so you would have had a the runner would not have been all of it, but it would have been. You have rules, so you know. Again, um, there are certain things that we do. There's things that we do when we fart stray too far from the eight and where we take profits there if we do, and so on. So there's a number of things that we look at. But look right here. You're asking me to to talk about the future. This is a pretty big signal, okay, uh, on the long side. Now, I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not going to say it's going to go long. There's a big uh, sometimes if the candle is too big, it, it can exhaust. It certainly didn't exhaust here. OK, or here. But this looks like we're, we're heading for more upside. Now, I drew these lines just on this peak here, this peak here and this peak here. Some some of the sh some of the sh shorter term uh, or the dailies that. So I'm, I'm thinking, um, you know, we're probably going to test this this 42 hundred area in the S and P, but you know, we'll see. But again, this may or may not be a trade that one would take based on the, the amount of risk. Again, you can't take every trade because of the risk. Okay. Uh, let's take a look real fast at just to just reduce this to the five where I trade on a daily basis. Now, one thing I will say that, that when I talk about my, my, the amount of the number of positions and how I manage taking the number of positions, I I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm looking around, okay? I'm looking around at, at, um, at what I'm seeing in the chart. Very important to manage that. Uh, here's, here's a signal here that got, got the scalp. One, two, three, four, five, six. I may have gotten in here, but it stayed on the, on the north side of the moving average. Probably would have stayed in. There are other things that we do past the six. Here's, I'll tell you what I do. I don't want to, you know, this is a nuance, one of the many nuances that we have. See, when you get to this point, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're, we're far away from the trigger. And I'm starting to think, you know, is this going to happen? You know, um, so what I do is if I don't want to get out here, okay, um, I'll put my stop in under the low of all of the bars that led to the sixth bar. And it could have been the six bar, but I'm putting my my stop in below here if, if I want to stay in the trade. Why? Because it's not in creating a, a, more, a lot more risk. I mean, I'm here at the end of the six bar. This is the the only risk I'm 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 creating other than the break even risk here. Actually, it looks like you would have gotten out. Well, you didn't, you didn't take your scalp yet, so you'd still be in this trade. You would have taken your scalp right in here. Okay. Uh, again, I don't want to get into the minutia, but here's another uh, one that. And if you got out here. If you were whipsawed here and here, and I show you ways not to do that, uh, you're, you, you'd be in he for here, or if you, would, or you just didn't want to get in the chop, waited for some clearance, look at this signal. What I like about this, now you may not, you may say this doesn't look like a big move, but you know, before the candle started getting real big, uh, these moves were pretty big. I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty small, and this one looked big comparison, and we took out all of these highs. This is a, a great position to get into. Now you only got your scalp out of it, but you got another chance right here to get in. Look at this. And look at this payoff. This is the risk. Here's the scalp. And then here's the payoff on the other position. Amazing. Okay, amazing. And look at here. This is today's reversal. Now, uh, here's, here's your hesitation. Here's your movement through the eight bar. This is a sell signal. Now you may only be able to take on one position or you may only, can only take one micro position because your stop is all the way up here. Or it may be too, you may have too small account not even to take a micro. But look what happened. I mean, look at all the things that happened. Look, look, at, look at the value of, of this loaded gun trigger. I mean, not only, I mean, I, the, the tail makes the, the stop 
Uh, and then I show you how to make stops so that they fit into your parameters so that you can take this trade. I can show you other ways to do that. I'm just giving you some of the key elements. But we've tested the top. We've done it again. How many times have I said this? Where we take out all the people that just bought before the close of this bar, just took out this high. Now, if you if you buy here, but get out of two or three seconds later, okay, you can get a couple of scalps. But if you're looking for this to be the start of a big move because it took out the high, it only ha it happens less than 50% of the time. So wait for the close and look what happened. Boom. Uh, and, and look at this move. I mean, this is a, you know, this is a, you know, a 50 point move in the down. Okay. And then followed by, uh, you know, if you woke up, if you only, if you weren't in, in front of the chart here, you had this and you say to yourself, should I take this signal? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, if you, if you can qualify from a risk management standpoint, yeah, I can take it and look what happened here. So, um, just to show you uh, how this works on the longer term and the shorter term. Let's take a look. So I've shown you crude. I want to show you gold uh, before. I don't have much time. We only have about seven or eight minutes. But I want to show you gold because I want you to be concentrating on gold and silver. I am because this the next couple of months are very, very strong months for the, for the uh, five to six weeks of very strong upward markets for the gold. So I'm looking to take long positions in gold and sometimes to the denial of the short positions. To, uh, at least from a position size standpoint, okay? Let's take a look at what, what gold looks like. Okay, are you digging this? I just wanna make sure you're with me in these last few minutes, okay? Um, just somebody in the chat that I didn't lose you, okay? Uh, all right, great. All right, great, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, thank you, Drew. Okay, uh, here is the five minute chart in the gold. Look at this, I'm gonna take out the, the, uh, uh, the, the what I call the back, um, guardrail. Uh, that's for another discussion. But look at this. Uh, here is a position on the short side that you would have gotten a scalp, and then you would have broken even probably or something close to it here on this on the second position because at, when you take your scalp, remember you're take you're you're moving your on the other to break even. But look at this, and you may have taken this and lost on it. But you you know you'll see losers along the way. But then if you stick with the system and don't get discouraged by a loser. Look what happened here. Look at this. Okay, this is today. And if you were up at six o'clock, I'm up at seven. So I'm, I probably missed this trade. I would have missed this trade, but uh, I start the trading. But if you're, this is a reason to maybe get up at six tomorrow. But look at this, look at this move. 1790 to 1816, it's, good. it's a nice move. It looks, it looks a little bit, maybe than what it is because uh, I'm sorry, this is gold. I, mean, I thought I was looking at the S&P again. No, this is a, you know, this is a, a, a $25 move in gold. Look, and if you, if you got in late, got up late like this, you took this signal, okay? And you, and you got your scalp and you're still in your second position. Look at this. So what do I think about gold? I think it's going up. This is the daily chart. I'm sorry, this is the five minute chart. Uh, so day trade, you would, let's look at the daily. Uh, but but what a day in gold! If you're in, now you're seeing we, we, this is the daily chart. You've seen the double bottom here. I mean, look at this. This is not only a small body but a gap. I haven't even talked about that. A, a, a high the, the gold looks like it's at least going to approach the 1840 level, and and looks like it's it may make an attempt to the 1900. Why? Because we have a triple. Uh, we have a, a triple action here on the bottom. Of course, we're decelerating. I'd like to see where this winds up at the end of the day, probably somewhere up here, but let, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, we don't, you know, I, I don't really take a look at this until I see the market coming down uh, or give me a, a, a red candle, then I can see, uh, I measure the RSI. But look at here, here's a, um, that's kind of a bastardized version, but uh, this is a, an engulfing candle, which is an alternate thing that we use, but only in some sense. Here's another hop like this one, see what happened here, it led to a higher level. Okay, this right here, this is gold. Look at look at this, look at this signal, look at this loaded gun signal, boom, look at this. And then the reversal, you got your scalp. Here's a losing position. Uh, here's another losing position. So what? You've taken these other things because you're stuck with the system. Here's a, I don't think I would have gotten into that position, but here's a, win, a winning scalp. Here's nothing going on. This is not a, I can't describe why this is a short position. Here's a long position that win. Here's another winner on the long side. So I'm saying you'll have losers. You'll, one third will be losers, but you'll be, they'll be all set by the, uh, by the scalps that you'll take. Okay, where are we? I got about four minutes left. Uh, that's gold. 
and and you can't you can't um, can't turn your back on silver because silver um, is something that you you definitely want to pay attention to. See if I uh, here's here's silver right here. Um, I, it's, uh, their menu is, is getting in my way of expanding this chart. Okay, this is the silver chart real quick. And um, this is the five minute chart. You can see that you had a similar signal here. Uh, you had another, look at this uh, signal here that you got your scalp, but you were knocked out. Here's another losing signal, but here's another winner. Here's another winner on the downside. So silver uh, responds the, uh, pretty much the same way. This is a five minute chart. It's a bigger contract, so be very, very careful. And this is the day chart of silver. Look, it's it's churning up when it does this. Um, it, it, it's usually ready for some sort of a move. This becomes an accumulation and you measure this distance it's like a it's like a compass. You put your pin here and you put your pencil here, and then you then you you rotate on the on the pen on the pin, and you can you go up to see where your target is up there. It's an old school way of doing it, but um, you know here's uh, here's we don't have any really clear signal. Here's a clear signal right here that got your scalp, uh, but I don't see any signals here on a daily from this standpoint unless unless you're looking at other things, but not from the uh, from loaded gun. But again, gold and silver is something that you need. You saw how well it did on the five minute. Um, okay, I want to show you again, right before we leave, I want you to at least get my, uh, even if you're not going to prop trade, I want th this, this concentrates on how to, how to keep your, your, uh, your risk low on trades, and how to uh, allow for expansion of trades, and how you can manage those two capabilities in order to pass the prop test and be funded with $100,000 and get, it's happening all the time with 90% of the profit. But again, it's only for 10% of the traders. This loaded gun system that I've talked to you about today, uh, I've, I've only just scratched the surface, but I tried to show you the value of the trigger. Please don't trade this based on what I just showed you because you, you need to do some testing. You need to, I want you to do that self-analysis first so that you can Put the nuances that you need to put in to match you. Otherwise, like any other system, you'll have trouble following it. Even though it is a simple trading plan, uh, you want to know what the nuances are and so on. So again, I appreciate uh, um, everybody for um, for being here and, and uh, watching the presentation with me. Again, the disciplinetrader.com forward slash pro prop win. Okay. And put your, uh, just grab your uh, your free white pa white paper, and I'll uh, love to show you what I'm doing in that respect. All right, David. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity.